Hi everybody, welcome to part two of this lecture. As I said uh, in the previous lecture, we were talking about working with Indigenous people and you know I'm going to extend on that a little bit now which I hope is uh, important information for you um, that m working across cultures more generally. So perhaps a good place to start with this one would be look to look at culture. What is culture exactly? Well there is no one meaning for the term culture. I mean if we all were to write down a paragraph or two with our definition of the term culture there may be maybe no, in, no consistency there you know there people could be writing different things. Some of us may struggle and not know how to start and that's perfectly okay because there is no one meaning to the term culture. We're going to have different uh, interpretations of the term because it means different things to different people. Some people do not have a term for the word in their traditional languages. Um, for example, you know, I mean often people will say that they do not have a culture which means that they know nothing about culture because wherever there is people there is human culture. Culture of course has nothing to do with national identity. You know, we could be Christian, we could be Muslim, we could be atheists, and we could all identify as an Australian. We could um, all be Australians, and some of us may celebrate Christmas, and some of us may not. Some of us may celebrate Christmas by going to Bali, others may go to church, and others may buy presents. Um, people get terms such as traditions and culture mixed up. It's important to remember that culture has nothing to do with national identity. Okay? One of the reasons why we don't understand culture is because it's something that we engage in without even realizing it. And this means it's very difficult for some people to be able to talk about their own culture. Now what happens is when we're in the dominant group in society we don't actually realize this because we have a long history of asking those in minority groups to tell us about their culture without actually realizing it how difficult it is. Now the reason we don't realize how difficult it is is because we have never contemplated the question ourselves and we have never been asked the question ourselves. So don't be surprised if people struggle to be able to talk about their own culture because they live it. Culture develops over time, okay? It, it's always changing. So, for example, you know, we, we try something out, it doesn't work for us. We try something else out, it works for us. We start to use it on a daily basis. Our children are exposed to it and then they start to use it as well. And then all they need to do is move away from that environment and that can change. For example, if our children, if we're in the church and we marry and our children marry rock and rollers and they move into a house together, their culture is going to change. All we need to do is to move into state and the way we dress changes, you know. Culture is always changing. It is shaped and influenced by our natural surroundings and our human surroundings. So for example, when we're in one part of the country we may dress a particular way. When we're in another part of the country we'll dress a particular way. You know, there are professional cultures, you know, people who are carpenters dress differently to people who are lawyers for example. So culture is shaped by our surroundings. It is environmental, it is not biological. We are not born knowing how to use chopsticks. We are not born knowing how to play a didgeridoo. So therefore culture is cyclical. It is always changing because of all of the things that influence it such as the family environment. Again, we could all be Australians, but we could all have a different family environment based on the socio-economic positions of our parents, based on our religions, etc. The natural environment, the social environment, the political environment, the historical environment, all of those things shape the way we behave, communicate, and what we believe. And that becomes our culture and then it's constantly changing again and as I said you know there are some people in Australia who have relocated here to countries 
where it is embarrassing for the family for the man to be seen in the kitchen or cooking in the kitchen so a teenage boy from one of these countries could get here watch TV and he will see that the majority of TV chefs are men and this can then influence him to want to become a chef okay it can influence women from these societies to want to pursue careers it can influence people to want to pursue politics all of these things these people didn't have the opportunity to do because of the environment they were in previously and they've moved and all of a sudden they have that opportunity and that then changes their culture okay there are many types of culture there are human culture we all share similarities often there are more similarities and differences you know some people may kiss each other on the cheek some people may bow and some people may shake hands and they are all saying g'day there's organizational culture okay so for example the university that you're studying at now may be different to the university you were studying at previously the place where you work now may be different to the place that you worked previously often the things that determines public sector organizational culture is the nature of the portfolio so you'll see this at uh, certain public sector agencies where people have to walk around with badges on codes to get into particular doors uh, and all of these sorts of things other agencies um, sport and recreation for example people may come to work with shoes and socks and a football okay family cultures again we may all be Australians but we all have different cultures okay um, and these are shaped by many different things so don't think that there is one um, culture in Australia or in America or in any other country for that matter um, there are subcultures now if you look at the definition of culture there is really no such thing as subcultures they are just cultures but when people talk about subcultures they are talking about um, groups of people who come together with a common ideology and a common perspective and these people share their ideas with each other for example bikers hang around bikers punk rockers hang around punk rockers etc and then of course there's youth culture whenever you're dealing with youth you're not only dealing with their cultural background but you're also dealing with something that is a youth culture uh, and of course if we were working in a science back in area we would think of any form of bacteria or microorganism as a culture so what does human culture include it includes knowledge transmission now as I've said indigenous people have always had their own ways of transmitting knowledge and this is done through ceremonial participation so as people go through ceremonies they are given access to knowledge for example the knowledge in indigenous society is about okay when those flowers start to turn purple then it's a good time now to go and catch some barramundi or there's different knowledge which is sacred knowledge that relates to the creator ancestors etc and all of that is knowledge transmission and it exists in all societies religious beliefs we all have different religious beliefs okay we do not share the same reality some people in Australia in Darwin probably where you are think believe 100 percent that there may be 12 gods others believe in different things okay and that is their reality so for example if there was a man in the Amazon jungle who was doing a particular ceremony none of us could tell him that he is not traveling to the Milky Way because in his mind his ancestors have always traveled to the Milky Way every time they conduct those ceremonies similarly if we go to a church we will not be able to tell people that they are not talking to God because they believe they are so we all have different religious beliefs but when we are in the power group we can automatically dismiss um, those other religious beliefs 
uh, without realizing that our religious beliefs are just as difficult to prove from a science perspective as any other religious beliefs. Then of course all cultures have different gender roles, morals, legal systems, social rules and health beliefs and as I said you know indigenous people's health beliefs might be that for example they have not looked after their land, that people are not singing the songs that they were supposed to sing and therefore their land is sick and therefore they are sick. So how do humans develop culture? Well they develop culture through the verbal communication they use, age and gender rules and laws, their religious beliefs, the ceremony, songs and dances, their family experiences and their social and economic status. And of course all of those things are changing as well and can change um, often. So what does culture do to us? Well, it helps us to survive. It provides us with rules, determines our behaviour and influences our perceptions. It provides us with safety and meaning and keeps us in contact with other people who share this understanding. So culture keeps us in a bit of a comfort zone because we're familiar with everything that is going on around us. Now one thing I might talk about now is something called cultural awareness that some of you may have participated in as participants, as deliverers, facilitators or may participant, participate in as facilitators or um, participants uh, at a later date. What you need to understand about this term cultural awareness is that it is really about positioning people to see things through a lens that they have not been positioned to see through before. It is about understanding and appreciating that other people may see things differently and it creates an understanding of this that values this, that values these different perspectives. It shows that there are different ways of interpreting the world and reacting to different situations. Cultural awareness is not about developing pills that save the world, okay? Cultural awareness is about providing with people, people with information about a culture that they did not know about and then assisting those people to capitalize on that new knowledge so they can provide benefits for the people that they are working with and improve their own work performance. Now, I want to talk a little bit about something called culture clash, okay? Culture clash occurs uh, when people from different cultural backgrounds do not share the same values, beliefs and perspectives, okay? Where there is an uneven power balance and where there is a history of domination and oppression. However, as I just said a few minutes ago, Culture clash can occur within the one family between generations and I provided an example of a man, a teenage boy I suppose, who's just come here from a country where it is embarrassing for him to be in the kitchen and all of a sudden he's here and he wants to be a chef. This can cause culture clash within his own family. So culture clash is not just between people with different uh, who come from different countries for example. Now what are some of the causes of culture clash? Different perceptions of time. Indigenous people have not had calendars the same way as people from Western countries have. They have understood time differently and indigenous people may not use English properly to talk about this. You're talking about low levels of education, low levels of English etc. So when you're working with indigenous people they may not say that it happened on the 27th of December. They may say that it was after Christmas, just before the dry season, just after the grand final etc. Okay? And this is how they'll also identify places where that big rock is. You know where those two trees are? Near the mangroves? There. Okay? Rather than a particular site, a particular location as we would know them.
One of the other causes of culture clash, this is very important, so I recommend you take note of this, is thinking that others will react the same way as us. So if that was me, I would have just walked in there and asked, yes, but English may not be my fourth language. I may not have a history of mental illness. I may not have a history of domestic violence, sexual abuse, substance abuse. I may not have people in there that restrict me from going in there. I may be married and this can prevent me um, doing certain things with a member of the opposite sex. So we can never, ever make assumptions about people reacting the same way as us, okay? Different perceptions about gender, okay? Different perceptions about age, um, and I'm gonna talk about this in a minute. Different communication styles, different views on physical touch, different views on space. So let me tell you a bit of a, a, a story about this one. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was, I was asked by an organisation that works with refugees in, Austra in the Northern Territory um, and in Australia um, to deliver some training sessions and I said, sure, would love to. Now, we typically pay for these training, uh, organisations have to pay the university to attend these training courses, okay? But I said, no, let's do it under the guise of community engagement where it is us making a good contribution to the society that we are in. So don't pay us and we'll just um, do what we can. So the first morning I turned up, um, we were due to start at 8.30 on a Saturday and I turned up at 8 o'clock and I pretended to set up. I didn't need to set up, I was ready to go. But what I did while pretending to set up was just check out what was happening around me and then I fitted in with this. So women from this cultural group stood on one side of the room and men on the other and they did not interact. So I went and stood with the men and did not interact with the women. I followed what was happening around me because I was working in a different uh, cultural environment and I wanted to extract the best benefit I could for my employer. So in that instance, working cross-culturally came down to uh, coming up with practical responses such as getting there early, seeing what's going on and fitting in with that. Anyway, so I done my speech and sat down. The next speaker came in. He was tucking his shirt in, laptop under his arm, apple in his mouth, dumped his computer on the desk, walked straight over to the women, shook their hands, touched them on the shoulder, said hello, hello love, these sorts of things which are quite acceptable in Western societies. There's nothing wrong with calling somebody love or lovey, as we all know and he done a great speech but they never got him back they got me back and insisted on paying my employer the reason why this happened is because I got there half an hour early and scanned the situation okay so often working cross-culturally is just about those things now I was referring to age and gender a little while ago. Some of the issues there are that when we are in the workplace, for example, working on projects, we all have to adhere to anti-discrimination legislation. So we cannot say negative things about people's age or gender in the workplace or their cultural background. Regardless of what we think about that, we all have to adhere to anti-discrimination legislation. And another thing there that causes culture clash often is a lack of understanding and information about equal employment opportunity. So, for example, some people may think that equal employment opportunity is about giving Indigenous people jobs. It is not. 
equal employment opportunity is about four groups women indigenous australians people from non-english speaking backgrounds and people with disabilities being given the same opportunity to apply for jobs as others okay it does not mean that they actually are successful with their applications it just means they are given the same opportunity to apply through the principle of merit okay and the reason why EEO exists is because those four groups suffered covert discrimination for such a long time okay so that can cause problems because people don't understand that now I want to talk about something called culture shock okay when we're working cross-culturally now cultural shock is a natural reaction to different surroundings and it is about uncertainty and it is a process with stages it is being in an unfamiliar environment and it is about feeling isolated and out of control so again it is a natural reaction to different surroundings it is about uncertainty it is a process with stages it is being in an unfamiliar environment and it is being it is about feeling isolated and out of control now these are the stages of culture shock you can be excited you can look forward to a new experience you can get there and you can withdraw it it's difficult to fit in you don't like it it wasn't what you expected then you start to adjust you feel more comfortable and settled then you're enthusiastic you can see where you are going to be contributing and you want a voyage of discovery okay so there are different stages of culture shock some of the symptoms of culture shock include criticizing the host culture and people okay so I'm going to work at this different organization I get there I hate it and I start to criticize those people and the organization I become irrational and negative I don't participate I remain indoors isolate myself perhaps get homesick and fatigue now fatigue is a very important one when working cross-culturally because whenever we're working cross-culturally and there may be language barriers we are still communicating people are interpreting our body language okay so even if we're tired and we've been driving a long way to get to a particular indigenous community there is nothing we can do about it except be aware that people are indeed interpreting our body language now some of the things to do when you are coping with culture shock identify that you are experiencing it and don't freak out about it it's quite normal restrict your focus and energy to things that you can control so don't go off and try to help everybody with all of their problems do what you were there to do and do it well avoid blowing things out of proportion I'll give you an example of this I was working on a project and uh, engaged somebody to work on a project with me uh, working in a remote community and we were sitting around a table and somebody whispered something to the person that was working with me and this person repeated back to them something along the lines of what your husband's just left you and it was all over for us we had to start back from square one six months of work it took us six months to get to a place where these people felt comfortable talking to us obviously this person whispered what they did to the other person for a reason and immediately everybody was had lost trust with us and didn't want to communicate with us so we had to make up for that six months okay so avoid blowing things out of proportion be honest don't set yourself up to let people down so if you're experiencing culture shock don't walk around telling everybody that you're going to give them everything and you're going to do everything for them keep in contact with family and friends learn about the new culture and seek support okay so cross-cultural communication I just want to spend a few minutes talking about this slow down 
but don't talk to people like they are stupid. This is particularly the case in public waiting areas, okay? Because people will feel embarrassed and they will come back later and this means you then have to give your time to them later, okay? So talk slowly, but don't talk to people as if they are stupid. Ask single questions only. When we talk, when we communicate orally, there is no grammar. I do not say, how are you today, question mark. So ask single questions only. Allow people time to interpret what you are saying. Okay. Remember that English is not their first language. Uh, and remember that they have to try to think how they are going to explain a situation that may ne not necessarily be easy to explain in English. Don't assume a mutual understanding. Okay? So, for example, don't talk about acronyms. Don't say, go and get a 211 from SBD and then get it taken and signed from the SOD. Okay? Because these will be people who are external to the agency and will not be familiar with these internal acronyms. As I said, spend a few minutes observing and be aware of your body language. So hopefully today you've got some good practical advice about working cross-culturally.